Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartia and welcome to another episode of Mainframe Matters. We are here at Open Mainframe Summit in Philadelphia and we have two guests from Broadcom, Mohit Dadu, Senior Manager, Data Science and Engineering, and John Hart, Data Scientist at Broadcom. John, Mohit, it's great to have you both on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, and today we are going to talk about mostly uh, mainframe and machine learning. So first of all, I mean, we know mainframe is kind of backbone of modern society economy. People may not realize it, but every time we do any transaction, which revolves, it goes through a mainframe. But what about machine learning aspect of it, you know? So talk a bit about mainframe and machine learning. Actually, Broadcom, as might, you might be aware, is a leader in the monitoring space, IT monitoring space, right? So here, what we are trying to do, we are trying to apply machine learning at the operations level, at the monitoring level. So when you are having a business service, which is, take for example, the Bank of America, right? You are using an app, but behind the scenes, there is a mainframe which is serving the final uh, transaction, right? So at that end of the spectrum, you have the monitoring systems that you need similar to what you are monitoring in the cloud. So what we are doing at the mainframes, earlier we have tools like SysView, which used to monitor the systems. And similarly, we have uh, to monitor network, we have Netmaster. So we are trying to basically see uh, with the growth in the number of the transactions that are coming in because of the micro transactions, everybody is using even like Zelle for $2, $5, $10, right? So these has increased the number of the transactions. So what we are trying to do, the, there is a tremendous load coming onto the mainframe and we are trying to streamline the process by applying machine learning so that the number of the alerts that our product generates, that can be cut down and we show only meaningful alerts. And it is not about showing the alerts and then it will also help you to do a faster root cause analysis so that you can find the problem and then resolve it quickly so that SLA should be met from the mainframe side and end to end service uh, and the customer experience will be retained. From a data scientist perspective, if I ask you, what are the challenges as he talking about, you know, monitoring, you know, in a mainframe? So what are the challenges that are still there or they have been for a while? On the mainframe, CPU, memory, this is extremely pricey compared to distributed. So the models have to be, tend to be smaller, let's say. Right. One very interesting thing I, I would say though is now the the Tellum chip is is out, and this is this is quite interesting for the the kinds of models that you can use, the speed that you can inference on, because they they optimize it for inferencing. Right. So I, w I would say that it's a much more interesting uh, area than maybe it was even two years ago, right? For I mean, new data scientists might, I mean, definitely consider mainframe. And when we look at, you know, monitoring in the mainframe space, well, uh, you did touch upon that briefly, I mean, or in, in length also, but um, if you can just say, you know, how is kind of machine learning, you know, helping companies like Broadcom with, you know, monitoring and security? Because when you talk about monitoring, it could be for so many reasons, it could be performance, it could also be security. So talk about that. Initially, when we started our AI ops journey, so the biggest problem that we understood when we did the market analysis was the number of the rules that the IT operator need to maintain, or these are called static threshold. Basically, you, you say that I'm, I want an alert whenever a CPU goes above 90%, right? So these are the static threshold alerts that the IT operator need to define. And the first problem that we uh, basically targeted is to remove these rules and aut automatically learn based from the, from the historical data. So we built an anomaly detection model where we learned from the previous data and defined those rules rather than IT operators defining those rules. And that has helped us to cut down the false alarms and also the total number of the alerts. So that was the first step that we did, uh, took. Then after that, what we started doing it still there are a number of alerts were more and we need to cluster them together because uh, it, it will be easier to look at the alerts which are similar and uh, then if you combine them together using machine learning let's take for example in netflix when you get a suggestion of a movie 
right? It is coming based on your kind of a cluster. Means the people who have similar liking the kind of the movie that you see. So, so what we are trying to do similar uh, similar metrics, a uh, metrics which are behaving similar. We are trying to group them together so that we will provide you a cluster so that you can analyze and see okay what are, what is exactly happening in this cluster and that will help you to look at less alerts less alert fatigue on a IT operator. That's our goal. And down the line, we are working on, on the dynamic topology area, which is still in the works. Let's just look at either fraud detection, because that is a very you know, crucial, especially in a, or anomaly detection. Let's talk about that perspective, maybe. Currently, the models, we, we use uh, a historical moving window, right? So two weeks, or it, it doesn't really matter. But So we're moving in time along the time series so that the most recent data is weighted more, right? It, it has more impact. It kind of forgets about long past. And, and we take this and we have a two-dimensional KDE model with time one, one dimension and then the metric value is another. And we build this. And this is our basic anomaly detector. The companies who are looking, who are in the mainframe space, but they want to leverage machine learning technologies okay. to improve monitoring, security, everything else. What is the right way to approach it? So the right way to approach is basically I would say it should be done in a phased manner, mm -hmm. right? So the first phase is, as I uh, mentioned you, is to cut down the number, the rules that you maintain. Because uh, so you need to start from somewhere, right? So first, if you cut down the rules, don't maintain the rules, use anomaly detection. And then we, you need to also augment the SME knowledge along with that. So what is going to happen, you, you cannot remove all the rules. Right, machine learning is, is not a magical wand that it will fix everything, right? So you can remove a lot of, lot of the things, but the rest of the things you need to augment some SME knowledge. There will be some set of rules, but it will be mostly taken care by the machine learning, but wherever you see there are gaps, you need to fill it with the, with the machine learning. So that's, that's the first part. And then uh, once you see start seeing the benefits of it, then uh, the second step should be how you can take advantage of the clustering and uh, the topology and all these solutions. So it, it's, it's a kind of, kind of a journey. So like uh, some of our big, uh, larger institute, financial institutions, they are on this journey with us from almost last uh, three, four years. And they are now uh, reaping the benefits out of it. How much adoption are you seeing of machine learning, especially just you know, in the context of monitoring is there, or, or, or you see there is a, you know, still a lot of room for adoption. Yeah, I, I would say like adoption is happening, but at the pace that we expected earlier, right? I would not say that it, it is at that pace, but the, the, the organizations who, are, who themselves are very serious on this front, they are adopting well and they are getting the benefits. So it is not only on the one side that we keep pushing, we need to see the culture of that organization. If they are also, uh, if it's a partnership, right? If both the parties are uh, motivated, we are seeing benefit for only for those customers where we see the engagement from the both the sides. And they, uh, and ultimately what is going to happen down the line, they will be the winners. Are there any barrier of entries that you see of you know, machine learning and monitoring that, you know, that is also one of the reasons uh, when it comes to adoption? Barrier of entry is, I would say, still the perception. First of all, people need to start thinking that this is only mathematics. So machine learning is not rocket science. It is mathematics or I would say applied mathematics to solve or simplify your life. So uh, in the talk today, I was just taking an example. So earlier we used to write an email and or a blog. You don't know about the grammar, grammatical mistake or otherwise you need to go and learn all the, uh, all the grammar rules. But today Grammarly is taking care about that, right? So in, in that regard, so it is about how you can simplify the life. So first of all, you need to step up and say that machine learning is not a big deal. It's a mathematics that I'm going to apply to simplify my life. If you have that kind of a mindset, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward to, uh, for adoption. I think Mohit's well, spot on. I mean, if I, I view it as I love math and, and data science and machine learning, but it's, uh, you just view it as a tool. It's just a tool. If, if it's a useful tool for you, use it. I mean, in fact, I wouldn't reach for it first, right? If there's a simple, straightforward way, don't grab the machine gun, right? You don't need the big, the big, yeah, yeah. So, so I would just, yeah, when it's the right tool, you use it, right? We have been talking about digital transformation for a long time in the 
I mean, we can use the term traditional IT space, you know, uh, how, what is happening in the mainframe space? I would say like, first of all, there is no difference between mainframe and distributed, not at all, right? Because I think it is just yet another platform and uh, people have a kind of a perception or a notion that it is, it is a legacy platform, but we run Python, we run Docker containers, we run everything uh, on, on that platform. So I don't see any challenge on that side. So all the modernization efforts that are happening on the cloud and that are happening on mainframe is similar, right? And uh, like we did some internal study. We were looking at what we are doing on the mainframe monitoring space and what Amazon and Microsoft is doing. And do you know, so there are certain things that we did and Microsoft launched after we finished our research. I would say we are at, at par with the, with the distributed environment and it down the line it is more of hybrid because of all geopolitical and cyber issues, right? I'm telling you, there will be a culture of only hybrid. There will be no pure cloud. There will be no pure mainframe. It will always be a hybrid solution. If you look at just the cloud world, you know, we talk about multi-cloud, hybrid cloud. We, private clouds are there, you know, on-prem, and then, you know, hybrid clouds are there. And then even AWS, GCP, you know, Azure, you know, it's not a mono, single cloud world. So I was talking, I had a lot of discussion here also. It's not about mainframe versus you know distributed a cloud it is going to be mainframe and because there are depending on the industry you are in you will need a mainframe and you will also need private cloud and public cloud yeah i 100% agree because uh, no way so that the biggest problem is that looking from outside people think mainframe is legacy but once you basically work because i am working with broadcom from almost last 17 18 years and I, I don't see that uh, I'm basically outdated. We are, every year we are basically coming up with the, we are adopting the latest technology. We are working on the latest things. Even IBM's newest chip, they got rid of L3, L4 cache, right? I mean, they have it, but it's virtual. A lot of other video card manufacturers, GPUs, kind of have that. At least they got rid of L4 cache, right? So there are definitely things that, you know, the mainframe's taking the lead on, right? Mohit. Uh, John, thank you so much for taking time out today. Sit down with me and talk about mainframe and machine learning and triple M, right? Mainframe machine learning and monitoring. So thanks for the discussion and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank, thank you for having us. You.